All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Cagezilla 53 here in Manassas Park, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. Next month, we're headed down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You guys can catch us on Cagezilla 54. You'll be able to watch that on GoSports.com if you're at home watching. Just because we're moving around the country, you can sit at your living room and still watch some fights. We'd rather you come out live. But, but, you know, you can still sit at home and but chill But if you're in England, if you were in <laughs> yeah, Jordan, wherever. if you were somewhere worldwide, <laughs> worldwide where our Go Sports subscribers are, we're happy to have you, however you can get here. All right, let's throw it up to Chris. We'll get the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for our next bout. Making his way to the cage and fighting out of the right corner, it's Yachty Yerdahl. Yerdahl, 5'10", 138 pounds. He's 25 years of age, out of Capital MMA and Elite Fitness. Hyattsville, Maryland, with a record of 1-1. One one. He's ranked 62 in the active amateurs in the Bantamweight in Virginia, with a record 4-1 overall. Jay, you get a chance to talk to him? He is long, isn't he, for this weight class? He's uh, done jiu-jitsu since 2011, which is interesting for a guy his length and, uh, you know, he's very lanky. Um, two years MMA. Um, I am looking forward to this fight like I cannot believe because we know that his opponent is a show in and of himself. You know, and one thing he's done a lot of too, he's had a lot of Muay Thai fights, he's had a lot of kickboxing fights, so he's he's starting to got uh, starting to get a very well balanced uh, repertoire of skills. His yeah. jiu-jitsu is no joke as well. No, yeah, and no we joke. haven't seen him fight in, in, in about 13 months. So once you take that long a time off, get a little bit of time to train, get some of that stuff on your belt. But it's different when you get up here in the cage. Yeah, but especially the gym coming out of Capital MMA. Oh, you yeah. know, 13 months at the gym like that. Who knows what he's going to bring to this cage tonight? It gives you a lot of opportunity to improve. Now, absolutely one of the best names. I love it. When, they, when I was walking the halls and somebody said Muhammad Ali was fighting, I was like, I was getting excited. It takes you back a little, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I was getting excited. I was like, are you kidding? I was just watching a story about him. Muhammad Ali, this one, 5'9", 140, not quite as big as the irregular Muhammad Ali, fighting out of Trident MMA out of Woodbridge with a record of 1-1 one one here in Cagezilla, an overall record of 6-2, and two, 82 in the active featherweight amateur divisions here in Virginia. Jay, you get a chance to talk to him. Oh, my gosh. We've seen Mo Ali. He is a killer. He is a show. He talks. He chirps. He puts on a great show. He went to nationals, his amateur record. He's 18 years old making his, uh, when he made his debut in MMA. He is so fun to watch. He is an initiative fighter. He wants to be first, and he almost always is. One of the things that impressed me most about Muhammad Ali was when he fought against Ryan Patterson for the Cage Zilla featherweight title. Patterson is a very, very good submission, uh, submission grappler, and he put Ali in many bad positions. But Ali did a great job of staying calm, working his way out of it, and trying to keep the fight as best he could in his wheelhouse, which is striking. That's why I feel this matchup for Ali and Yerdaw is going to be so interesting because you have the height and reach with Yerdaw, but the explosiveness and speed of Ali that's going to make it interesting. All right, let's throw it back up to Chris here. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for three three-minute rounds at the cage with Zilla catch weight of 141 pounds. It is brought to you by Linex, real serious protection. Starting out, fighting out of the red corner, standing 5'10 and weighing in at 141 pounds, fighting out of Capital MMA with a record of two wins and one defeat. It's Yachty! 10, 138, 25 years of age out of Capital MMA. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, standing 5'9 and weighing in at 141 pounds, fighting out of Trident MMA with a record of one win and one defeat. It's Mohammed Ali! Coming out of Trident MMA, Ali 5'9 and 140. Michael Dolman, the referee for this fight, and it looks like all of these fights, as they put up, make sure that they get the cage all cleaned up. They'll get the cage all locked up, ready to go. This fight's scheduled for three three-minute rounds in this catchweight division at 141. In the red gloves, Yardall, he'll have all red gloves, and in the black gloves, Ali, as they meet right here in the middle of the cage. Yardall comes out very, very quick with that stiff jab. Mo, not afraid to tell you what he's thinking in that cage, either. No, I already saw it come get me. Very he has jabs from Yerdahl, landing right down the pipe. I love the guys who fight 
like it's another day in the office, but Mo has a mean streak that is actually wildly entertaining. Big leg kick. And in, in, in the length you guys were talking about from Yordle is definitely a difference here. I can see it from the first couple of jabs. Well, Yordo's doing a great job of using that step to establish his jab, getting a little more, uh, a little more pop on the shot. Ali's going to have to do a, a little bit better job of angling off and working his face. Yeah, but watch out for Mo timing that, those strikes and uh, getting the takedown right off it. Ooh, Very good, good right hand. He's a pretty good counterpuncher too, isn't he? There we go. Nice grab. Oh, Big shot landed Nafti by couldn't do too much with it, but that was a nice counter. Ali, very relaxed here. Both fighters still breathing through the nose. So we can tell when things are getting okay. And, and everybody's, uh, you know, all right here in the cage. The last couple of fights that we've seen, those guys mouth breathing a lot, and especially with that mouthpiece in. Yardle has him pinned against the cage. Tough to get moved around. Not a lot of action right this very second. Just kind of just trying to feel each other out, especially when you start getting later into these events that we do here at Cagezilla. These guys, nobody wants to get knocked out like we saw in that last fight. Big rise, no. takedown. Immediately hitting rubber guard, though, is Yardal. Ali's oh, got to be careful here. He's got to get his elbows in. He's got to posture up to prevent the threat of that leg coming across here. He's got to be careful now. There's an omoplata set up, but it looks like his elbow is just too, too far. Just too far out. Yurdo adjusted. Oh, he actually was able to hook the leg. Now, Ali almost had one of his own. Very good transitions there. Tough to call. Tough to call. And Mo might have, Mo looks, sure looks, like he, looks like he has a, a pretty significant strength advantage here, but boy, Yafti's got some great ground fighting experience. Really and the good flexibility. flexibility. <laughs> he, he tells me, his coach tells him he is too flexible. Well, too flexible. I don't know how you can be as a, as the least flexible person, Kevin, I you've mean, ever met. I don't know how that could be true. I, I, I mean, Erdo's foot is up by his face. <laughs> well, he's looking to set up uh, actually what looks like he's in rubber guard, but he's looking to set up what I believe to be a Goga Plata, but now he's transitioning to a triangle, except for both of Ali's shoulders are in. He needs to separate one or the other. So how does he do that from here? Well, it looks like he's a little jammed up because he has his left arm trapped, and Ali... Ali's right arm looks dead. Is Ali out? No, he's still moving. He's still moving. He's okay. Just gave. Yeah, he, he gave, gave a thumbs Mike up. A thumbs up. He's, it's tight there, but there's not a whole lot to be done because Yurdo's actually stopping himself from from advancing the position. You see here, he's, he wants to free his hand, but once he d does that, it's going to create the opening for Ali to escape. Mm -hmm. Ali just kind of resting, trying to get a, a, a better feel oh, for this. Oh, here we go. And that's it. Yurdo did a great job of hooking that leg, which prevented the slam, but there wasn't a whole lot either guy could do there. Uh, when all when all was taken into account, as, as the seconds come in, Ali is just really still very composed. Looks like he's waiting for a bus. Yeah, very composed, <laughs> breathing through his nose. This did not affect him, not at all. And we saw exchanges early in the fight. Once it went to the ground, some really good counter movement, CD. That when we start to see this replay, that you'll be able to see what happened. He'll probably throw the exchanges here. Good kick, good rights. We'll try to measure some folks up. That's that kick that got caught. As you see this, as he start, see this as Yardo tries to measure the distance there, CD. Yeah, Yardo did a great job of making every shot count. And Ali hit a nice throw there, but immediately you see Yardo uh, start to attack off his back, which is exactly what you have to do. When you are put down and somebody gets on top of you in MMA, you cannot hang out. You have to immediately start attacking and make them want to get up and stay away from you. Ali trying to work the crowd here a little bit, and I, and, and I just want to tell Ali, if you start throwing punches and landing them, this crowd will wake up. <laughs> here we go, round number two. Yerdal in the red gloves, Good in move. the black gloves for Ali as they stand toe-to-toe -to -toe in Cagezilla. Nice angle cut, Charles, what you were going to say by yeah, Ali. Absolutely, really good movement here. I like that their hands are up. Ali, a little showmanship in here. And he's just getting warmed up. <laughs> Got to get those hands up. Yardo's got those hands down just a little bit here. Kind of see what's going on. Very good guard from Ali. He does a good job blocking. Now he has an opportunity to be first here. And typically he is. And we've seen him fight in the past. Well, one thing that Yardo did really good in the beginning of the first round was that he just kept stepping into that jab and timing it really well. And he's kind of gone away from that. I would like to see him bring that back because that was opening up other opportunities. Little block on the knees. Yeah, they jammed each other up a little bit there. Both fighters still trying to measure each other out. Ali seems to be a little more aggressive. Yardo, ooh, there's a right hand over the top. 
just trying to figure each other out here. And, and, and this is one of those things where we talked about not wanting to get knocked out early. Just walk into one that just catches you. Well, there's just a lot of technical uh, aspects being used here. A lot of feints, a lot of movement. Ooh, beautifully timed takedown by Ali. And again, Yordel goes to that rubber guard, but Ali actually angled off this time and prevented that from happening. Got to watch the up kick here. Yeah, especially from legs as long yeah. as Yaftis. Yeah, you got to watch the leg kick. And, and I think Ali knows that. I think Ali saw that coming and he's going to try to stand to the side here, make sure he doesn't get, get caught in the chop. No, oh, and almost did, Kevin. Good call. <laughs> almost <laughs> did, but he's able to pass. Yordel's got a knee in. If Ali can pass through that knee, he'll be able to take deep side control. And Yordel Just was actually, like that. Yordel, well, Yordel was actually able to bring him back into full guard. Now he's working that rubber guard again. And once the legs are clamped, now this is tight. Now there's an armbar attempt. Ali comes back down and yeah, tucks that arm. The strength of Ali pulled that back. Very smart. If he kept going backwards, he would yeah. have been in a bad spot. Yeah, he was definitely in a bad spot. But Yordo's adjusting here. That armbar attempt forced Ali down and to get tight. And now Yordo's able to work that over under, uh, excuse me, uh, rubber guard control that he worked initially last round. There's a little more pressure here. If he can hook that leg that he's reaching for, he can actually create a lot of pressure. This, this is a little bit different now. This is more of a trap, but he's not going anywhere. You can see nah. Ali's arm is actually tucked, and this is a very dangerous position for him to be in. Probably not for five seconds. And not enough time maybe yeah. for you after to work it. Not yeah. enough time for it to happen, but that was a good yeah. setup. Ali's got to be aware of that. He did a good job avoiding it the first time. Now he's got to think about it as he goes down and gets into, into these <laughs> positions later on in the fight. Now, right there at the very end, uh, y y Yardo threw an elbow to the top of the head. And, and did you see Mo <laughs> sort of <laughs> ruffle his head? Like, yeah, that, that left uh, a mark. And Dolman actually talked to Yardo about it. I mean, it was, it was right there with two seconds left, and he gave him an elbow right to the top. Sneak him in when you can, I guess. And, and now we're still breathing. Now Ali's breathing a little bit harder than he was. Yeah. Well, you're going into the third round, a very active yeah. fight, a lot of grappling, and it's very tight. That was that kick that just yeah. missed, just got past and, the and foot. And spun Ali around. Not a lot of elbows from anybody when they get on the ground. This right here was that arm yeah, bar Yeah, this is close right here. But you can see Look Ali, at the strength. Uh, Ali just stepped back in. And he turns that arm yeah, right in. Bend out. that arm. Yeah. He's very broad, isn't he, across chest and shoulders. He's got a lot of strength in his upper body. Third and final round is they get the seconds out. Yardal in the red gloves, in the black gloves, Muhammad Ali. Ali now catching his breath, both fighters to belt, and standing right in the middle of the cage. Good left hook to the body by Ali. And Yardal caught a little knee. He, he kind of ran into it. I don't think it affected him very much. See a little more aggressiveness here. We don't want this one to go to the cards. This one's too close for me to call, CD. I'm going to let you go ahead and do those first two rounds, too. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this fight could definitely go either way. I think that Yordal won the first. The second, though, is really, is really, really close. Uh, I see where he was with that Ali one, but I, oh, big jab there. If he could follow that up. Another one. He's got the timing now. He's got the timing. His coach is really imploring him to put more pressure on him. Oh! That'll really throw you off a little bit. Big jab again, and right out of the way of the counter. Very smooth striking from Ali. Strong takedown. It to do the, get a takedown. Now this is key. The excellent adjustment. What he did was he planted that second foot down and he prevented the rubber guard from being able to take place. This is going to allow him to pass and get more vicious ground and pound. He's got to be careful of that arm though. He's got to be careful of that arm. Now this is an omoplata attempt, but he needs to clear it. He needs to clear that elbow. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of pressure on that shoulder. I'm about to say elbow, elbow, elbow here from Ali. Just the, in a bad spot. For the viewers, you can see how tight it is across his shoulder. If Yardo is able to take those hands across Ali's face and create almost a cross face, he can really extend both forcing the shoulder out but the face in. And that creates this uncomfortable twist that is almost unbearable. So what's, what's Mo got to do here? How's he going to get out? It's a great question. Ali actually has to turn into it. The problem is that he's somewhat safe because Yardo can't extend because the cage is stopping him. Mm -hmm. However, he can't advance unless he turns in and clears the leg. So he almost has to go belly down and circle around to get that arm free from the omoplata. And we'll see what happens here as, as, as Yordle may even try to stand up. This arm is really in an awkward spot here. He's got there it deep is. and almost got that cross face you just mentioned, CD. He was looking for it. Ali's doing a good job here of staying heavy. Now what Yardo needs to do, he needs to hook his legs 
And now he's now he's got something. Now he has a straight on the plot, it looks like. But I, I just haven't seen this before. A lot of pressure you're, you're, you're right under the neck. Really you're gonna, technically. You're going to have to tell me, right. Charles, because I'm sitting here watching these two pythons try to squeeze <laughs> each other. So what's actually happening here now is he's looking to get that arm <laughs> underneath the neck, but he can't quite do it. At least got the chin tucked and he's okay. He's, Ali is trying to fight Yerdal's hands to create the opening to then posture himself up. But with him flat on his back and his arm tucked, there's not a whole lot he can do. Now it, it's getting under. Ali's making good adjustments though. By, hold, by holding that hand, he prevents the squeeze. This is what's keeping him alive right now. But this is not where you want to be with 12 seconds left in the round. Not no, at all. This is great pressure from Yafti. He's winning this round before a very eye. Yeah. Just, just by just keeping him still and not doing anything. And, and he had him tied up for most of the round. Very and there impressive. It is. This is going to be hard to untangle. I mean, I, this is one of those ones where I'm going to let you say all the things about who should win this thing. Look, that was a very, very close fight. Uh, I'm inclined to believe that Yerdal won, especially with the way that fight finished. But Ali looked great. Excellent striking. He really had the timing, too, for, and, the, for the beginning. Great timing against a guy with great timing in Mo. But you never know what the judges are going to be looking for. What you know is it? Are they are they scoring position more than aggressiveness? You know, are they scoring defense higher than some judges do? Exactly. A lot of it's subjective. To your point, it's subjective. But I feel that those those uh, first and third rounds were just too much of Yurdo's, despite the the hard shots that Yurdo took in the beginning. Yep. The way he was able to control the fight on the ground for that long. I think that's, I'm inclined to give him that round. And, and really had uh, uh, Muhammad in some tough spots to where he had to get out of. But these stand-up blows, you know, that, that uh, Ali landed, they could count in his favor, of course, and, and didn't really pay that much of a toll on uh, Yachty. Ali did such a good job with his wrestling. He did such a good job establishing his jab and countering. But, it, you know, it, the adjustments his corner gave him at the uh, in the middle of the second round into the third were great, but they still didn't allow him to pass through that that rubber guard and avoid getting entangled in what ultimately was almost an open plot. All right, referee Michael Doman's going to get both fighters right back out to the middle of the cage. Chris has the cards, and we'll throw it up to him, and we'll get the call. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. Judge one scores about thirty to twenty-seven. Judge two scores about 29-28, and Judge three scores about 29-28. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Out of the blue corner, Muhammad Ali. This is why I'd never do this. Well, the wrestling and the jab of uh, Ali might have been enough to steal that last round. I've had it going even one to one. I think it was close enough where it's not quite a robbery. Yeah, but. My opinion is now known on, known on Go Sports. <laughs> I'm up leaving it all up to Charles to talk about those from here on out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, still lots of fights to come. Don't anybody go anywhere. If you're sitting around at home, grab something real quick to drink. We'll be right back right after these messages.